Hello folks. Today I'm going to be putting together a how to boil crawfish video. It's how I do it. I understand there's a lot of different ways out there. I've watched a lot of different ways. I've pieced together this crawfish boil recipe and I believe that it is, you know, it's upper echelon crawfish boil. It's top notch. It's more to it than just throwing a bag of boil and some hot water. It's going to cost you a few extra bucks down at the grocery store. But if you got the time and you got the money, I think you should at least try this recipe once. And hey, you know, you may like it, you may not. Different strokes for different folks. That's why they got apples and that's why they got oranges. Everybody's got their own flavors that they like. And this is mine. Currently, I am driving a little further south from where I live in Mont Bellevue, Texas. It's Texas City, a place called Boyd's One Stop Crawfish. They sell crawfish midweek, which works out good for me because I'm a shift worker and I don't have a whole lot of time off. So, the majority of my bulls are midweek and I bull anywhere between four or five hundred pounds of crawfish a year i'm not a bull master i'm not a complete novice i'm just a family man who enjoys cooking crawfish for his family and his friends and that's the great things about bulls and barbecues and stuff like that to me is getting folks together watching the smiles on their faces when they're sitting there gossiping and talking and catching up enjoy it so yeah get get along with this video uh, this is my first YouTube video I've ever made I am not a tech savvy individual by any means I'm not a, a public speaker I don't enjoy speaking in front of large groups of people but as of right now, all I'm doing is speaking to my phone, driving down the road, and folks are probably looking at me through the wind windows and thinking this guy is freaking crazy. But that's okay, because they don't know me. But if the video goes big enough, maybe they will. I'm kind of curious to get everybody's thoughts on this, but here's the question. What makes a good crawfish? A quality crawfish. This is part of the great crawfish conundrum that we judge each other on when we go to everybody's bowls. I think it, it comes down to three three separate things. Is the crawfish juicy? Has the bowl got up inside the shell? delivered that flavor that you worked so hard on into the meat. Second, man, how well are these things peeling? Do they just crumble in your hands because the shells are overcooked? Does the meat not want to separate from the shell, you know, in the, in the pinchers or in the tail? Then the last one, I think it's a no-brainer. It's kind of the most obvious one. Man, how's the flavor? And there's different flavors for different folks, I think. Because some folks like to suck the heads, others just want to eat the tail meat. So you gotta kinda, mm, I'd say adjust the amount of heat you have on your crawfish based on who's gonna be sucking the heads and stuff like that you're not going to make everybody happy every single bowl what you try to do is just find the find the happy medium and go from there like me personally man I, I love pulling that tail apart from the from the body and crushing that that head and sucking all the juice out of it man I absolutely love that part 
So my crawfish bowl is maybe not as hot as some other people make theirs because I don't want to die every time I, I suck the head of a crawfish. But if you, know, you and the people you're going to be bowling for don't do that, hey man, maybe you take my recipe or your recipe and dial it up a little bit. Just, just some little things to think about. You know, it's... All right, this is going to be a simple boil today. I'm not cooking for a whole lot of people. Uh, so my ingredients are going to be fairly simple as far as all the extras. But this is just my basic throw down crawfish bowl around the house setup. So I got the big pot. I'm going to use that to purge my crawfish. Man, it works great with that basket. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, an old Coleman cooler. Yeah, as you can see, man, it's it's been through the paces. It's all warped up, and I've placed the hinges with some stainless. Cause it just it takes a beating with this hot crawfish getting dumped into it. I shouldn't have to tell you what that is. And this is my boiler that I bought about two two and a half years ago. It's a Cajun seafood boiler made by R&B Works out of Louisiana. Uh, I got this at the Bucky's that they just built in Baytown. And uh, man, it, it does a great job. It really, really does. But for the price that I paid for this dude, now you can go to our academy and get one that boils twice as much crawfish for the same price. But all that being said, you can look at the the gauge of the metal in this dude. And it really is just top notch, well put together piece of equipment. And I've boiled well into the thousands of pounds of crawfish in it. And it just keeps on rocking. Not all my tools, but some of my basic tools for the job, of course, you got your lighter. I don't want to get burned, so I got my firefighter glove that I borrowed from a previous job, long term. Thermometer, that's going to come in handy when I go to cool my crawfish and start my soak time. I don't know what you call that. I know what those are called. Those are scissors. Crawfish scoops. Uh, Bud Light breakfast. And I get them a crawfish bowl seasoning. Uh, I'll show you when I start dropping my stuff, but I don't go 100% Louisiana. I stick away from Zatarans. To me, it just tends to be a little bit too salty. But I've been messing around with this swamp fire here the past couple years. That's a great, great product. I, uh, on occasion, will use only that, but today, I'm going to do a mixture between Louisiana and the Swamp Fire. Just, it's a really cool little flavor profile, and we enjoy it. This is going to be strange for some of y'all, but I do add chicken broth to my crawfish bowl. I know that sounds crazy, but it's really, really good. I prefer to keep my crawfish clean in the pot, so I don't like to stick in a whole bunch of sliced up lemons or orange slices. So I'm getting my citrus out of just some liquid concentrate. Next door, we got some crystal hot sauce. You can use any Louisiana hot sauce you want. Uh, again, it just helps build that flavor profile. And I'm pretty fond of lemon pepper. Now this doesn't go into my actual bowl. This gets dusted on top of the crawfish after I yank them out and throw them in the cooler. But out of all the different lemon peppers I've tried, this is by far my, my favorite. A little onion powder, garlic powder, nothing fancy there. Some Louisiana concentrate. I will use this whole bottle in my mix. My pot, I believe, holds about 13 to 15 gallons of water. Then I got some parquet squeeze butter. Again, this doesn't go in my my bowl, 
this will go on top of the crawfish after they get dumped so i'll just sprinkle a little lemon pepper i'll dump a whole bottle of parquet squeeze per sack of crawfish and then i'll normally dust with a little bit more be the swamp bar or louisiana whatever i have handy like i said this ain't rocket science vegetables again i'm just cooking for me and my wife my boys don't really eat crawfish they're young they have a lot to learn i guess so my vegetables are going to be pretty simple today i got a one whole onion because my wife likes to eat the onion got to have a little tiny red potatoes i always try to get the smallest red potatoes as possible just some frozen corn today again this is a throw down bowl middle of the week kind of stuff a little pineapple delicious i also like to throw tortellini carrots mushrooms sausage of course in my bowls but man it's just really just gonna be the wife and i eating so we don't need all that extra stuff and then get on into this cooler here of course lots of ice ice is gonna be very important for the bowl uh, i got some breakfast and some brunch and then hiding under I got a 30 pound sack of jumbo crawfish. That was a little overpriced for my taste, but this is a midweek bull. It's a Tuesday morning. Not a lot of folks are selling crawfish during the middle of the week here in Southeast Texas. So you work with what you got. All right, be back in just a minute. Earlier I said I was going to purge my crawfish in that big pot right there, but I need to rephrase that. I'm going to wash my crawfish off. These are not purged crawfish that I bought today. They are midweek crawfish. I had an option between buying a, a, a mixed field run sack or paying a little extra money and buying just the jumbos. I'm not a, a jumbo kind of crawfish guy. I think you spend a lot more money on shells and heads and stuff that you're not going to eat. Typically, they're a lot harder to peel. Just, you know, the shells are tough. But all that being said, it's the last bowl of the season for me. I'm getting ready to go into a one month long turnaround out of the plant. I got two days off. I've worked over 500 hours of overtime this year. It's just been running and gunning. So I said, man, let me, let me end the season on the proverbial primo crawfish. And I said, it's just the wife and I got to take care of my honey bun. You know what I mean? But back to the purging. Uh, there was a study done at LSU where they put the uh, crawfish through the paces on the myth of whether or not salt water does anything for the crawfish as far as purging them out, getting the poop out of them. You hear all the myths about, oh, it makes them poop and it makes them vomit all the, 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 the mud out. Uh, they came back and after that study and they said, no, that's absolutely 100% not true. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, majority of you probably do, so I'm not trying to insult anybody here, but short story short, short a sack of purged crawfish has sat in a freshwater bath for over 24 hours. The water continues to run over the top of them. They don't have anything to eat, so whatever's in their system works its way out. And again, that's for like 24 hours, then they sack them up. You might have the setup to do that at your house. I don't. Uh, I ain't that mad at them that I would spend that kind of money to get something like that set up, even if it's just a couple hundred bucks. Because so I buy a sack of crawfish, I'm boiling them that day. You know what I mean? So just want to clear that up for y'all. Uh, don't want anybody out there wasting their time with that stuff. But it is important to wash them off. Even if I buy a sack of purge crawfish, I still... I'll run, run the hose over the sack a little bit, dump them in a cooler full of water and pull them out and then drop them in my pot. But these are jumbo crawfish, so they've, they've been gone through and hand-picked, more or less. So I would think they shouldn't be too muddy, but I'm still going to wash the hell out of them just, just to be on the safe side because ain't nothing worse than eating crawfish and then you, you taste the mud and get the grit and stuff all in your teeth. and. Man, it's just not that enjoyable. You know, we're not trying to be prima donnas out here with this stuff, but you don't invest the time and the money into paying for these crawfish and getting all the stuff to boil them and the seasonings and all the stuff that goes along with it. Man, 
spend an extra hour, 30 minutes, whatever it takes. Get some crawfish clean before you put them in your mouth. All right, moving on. All right. Got my crawfish out of the cooler. I'm going to give them a little rinse off, and then I'll drop them in this big pot over here. Fill it up with water. Agitate them up a little bit. Wake them up from that ice bath they've been chilling out in for the past 24 hours. I'll dump that water. I'll fill it up again. I'll dump the water. I'll fill it up again. And what I'm looking for is when that water starts going clear, that's when I consider my crawfish washed off good enough. Uh, I, again, I've put this video together today because this is how I do it. I know everybody's different, but I got this pretty cool little thought process, little philosophy from another video when the guy said, man, you keep washing them crawfish until that water's clean enough that you would consider drinking it. So I kind of hold true to that. Give them a good wash off. Again, this is just to knock the heavy mud off the best I can before I stick it in the, in the water. I know I ain't accomplishing a whole lot right here. Probably next to nothing, but that's how I do it, and I'm kind of the creature of nature, so. Call that good. So just at a glance, make sure I don't get too much shadow here. But just at a glance, these crawfish look like they are pretty darn clean, which makes me happy considering the amount of money I had to spend on them but I'm still going to give them a bath a couple times because I see that water run good and clear but I will not be drinking the water <laughs> I will drink my beer and be happy you see what I mean them crawfish appeared to be clean just looking at them as I was dumping them out of the sack but look how dirty that water is Looks like some of that water fresh out the Gulf of Mexico down here along the Texas coast. It's muddy. I can hear them singing to y'all. So I'm gonna wash these things a few times. Uh, now, picking out the dead ones, you're gonna have some kill off in, in every single sack of crawfish you get. That's just, it's a given, you know. Uh, these guys get yanked out of their mud holes and thrown into traps and kicked and busted around and some of them just die of shock and some of them get crushed. It's going to happen. But I'm not normally one that's really big on picking crawfish out of my water unless I see them floating. Like this guy right here, he is floating and that's a damn shame because he is so big and pretty. It's a nice crawfish. But to me, he is absolutely 100% dead. That's what I like to do. I'll throw him out there in the sun. Kind of watch for a little bit off to the side. If they start moving, that tells me yeah, there's, there's enough life in them. I'm not going to take the chance. But you don't want to get a, a crawfish that's been dead for too long in your mouth. It, it'll ruin you. Kind of like eating a bad oyster. It's just, it's nasty. The texture's terrible. The flavor's terrible. But you hear a lot of rumors too about, <clears throat> well, don't eat the crawfish that their tails are straight. That means they're, they, they're dead. They didn't curl up when they died. Well, I don't necessarily believe that. Reason being is, I mean, you're dumping a whole bunch of crawfish in there at one time. Man, that dude might have got pinned in the prone position and he couldn't curl up. So I don't let that be my guide. My guide is right here. If that crawfish has been dead long enough that he started to gas up and decomposition and he's starting to float, yeah, I'm going to yank him out. But other than that, they're going in the in the pot, and I ain't ever had any complaints. All right, before I get that boiler rolling, it gets pretty pretty darn loud. I just wanted to go over real quick what I put into the water pre-boil and what I drop in there after it stops boiling, or after it starts boiling. So my liquids, they can go ahead and go in there pre-boil. 
<clears throat> so I'll go ahead and drop both of these things of chicken broth. I'll put my bottle of liquid concentrate. I'll drop my bottle of Louisiana. I will put about, I don't know, maybe, maybe half of that, three quarters. And I, it's not on the table here, but I use either stick butter or a tub of butter in my bowl. Uh, normally I use about a third of a tub of butter per batch of crawfish that goes into my water. I think that helps. One, because, you know, butter's delicious. And I'm not doing this for health reasons. And I also believe that it helps the crawfish meat separate from the shells. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff in the water. And after we start rolling to a good boil, that's when I'll drop for this much water. I'm gonna put a whole bag of this Louisiana and I'll put just remain a half a bag of swamp fire in there just because it's already been open and I want to go ahead and get it used before the season's up so it don't go bad if it does go bad then get that stuff rolling pretty good I'll drop my garlic and my onion powder in I'll let all that boil for about five or ten minutes and everything get good and dissolved then I'll drop my potatoes in and my onion I'll let the potatoes go I don't know those are fairly small I'll go about 20 minutes on them then I'll pull one out do the old fork or knife test to see how done it is and if I think they're getting pretty close I'll go ahead and drop my corn and my pineapple at this point I would drop my mushrooms or whatever else I got that stuff doesn't need a boil to get tender we're just going to get the flavor out of the boil all right pretty quick but I've already added my liquid whole bottle of Christmas hot sauce I put both things of chicken broth about half a bottle of this lemon juice and I was gonna put the whole bottle that kind of started to second guess myself I'm not real sure I want to have my crawfish that hot so you can see about how much I use in there about half uh, I can always dial that up mid soak also. I start trying them about 10, 15 minutes in. If they're not got the spice that I'm looking for, I can always add more to this because it is a liquid. And that'll help get them up to spec. Kind of swapped over from my Bud Light breakfast to my Ziegenbach brunch. Good old Texas beer. Very, very tasty. I want to talk to y'all real quick about cook time. This is one of those heavily debated things that you know, some people say, man, as soon as they start to float, man, they're done. Pull them out. Or some people don't let them soak. To me, I'm looking for a couple different things. If it's early season and the crawfish shells are still pretty soft, I will kill the heat as soon as they start to float because those shells are soft and I just want to start penetrating them pretty quick. Later in the season as the crawfish shells get harder and more red and that beautiful atypical crawfish color, I start to look for a separation between that first little strip of shell on the tail and where it connects up to the main body of the crawfish. So as soon as that starts to separate, that tells me, okay, these crawfish are done. That's what I kill my heat and I drop my water temperature and I'll begin my soak time, which I'll show you that here in a little bit. Just want to throw that out there. It ain't, ain't nothing hard. Uh, and I don't know necessarily that my way is the right way, but that is what I do. And I'm normally pretty happy with the results that I get. One four and a half pound sack of Louisiana.
here as soon as I put the potatoes in. But it's all been boiling for around 25 minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and dump this, show you how this little contraption here works just in case you haven't had the opportunity to see it yet. Let that stuff drain out. So we had a little camera snafu there. So I want to go through this again. My water came back to a good rolling bowl and I was watching that, that first ring I was talking about in the shell. It made me like the process is good and done. So I instantly killed the heat and I dropped about probably around 10 pounds of ice in my water. So what I'm trying to do here is get my water temperature down around 150 to 160 degrees. That's well below the cooking point of the crawfish. And then when they can just sit there and soak all day long. So we're gonna let these soak around 20 minutes and we'll give our, give our first little taste test and decide whether or not they need to soak any more. Some of y'all were probably thinking when y'all saw me putting all those different seasons in there, it's like, golly, man, that's a lot of seasoning for, you know, 10, 10 to 13 gallons of water. But, 
The reason I do that is because all my water is going to get diluted when the ice gets dropped in there. It's going to melt, right? So I don't want to have just a bunch of salty water in the crawfish. I want to use taste the pepper and the cayenne and the in and all the other good stuff that's in there. All that being said, I'm about 175 degrees right now. I'm already through with 120 pound bag of ice and I got more in the cooler over here I'm gonna go ahead and grab. out there you want to think about what's happening down on the background levels of this so you cook them crawfish right you throw them in the, the hot boiling water all the liquids and moisture in their body has flashed off and became a gas so the crawfish began to float because now they're buoyant they're with the gas inside the trap inside the shells they're lighter than the water they're sitting on top pretty simple by dropping the temperature, what you've done is you've cooked, you, sorry, you stopped the cooking process, but now you're causing those gases inside the body to condense back to a liquid. liquid. So no longer are they buoyant, right? So they start to sink instantaneously. They start to sink back down into the water. And while they're sitting down there in that water, all the stuff that's condensed in their shells is starting to mix with the, the bowl. And I'm sitting here continuously agitating this stuff off and on for the next 20 minutes. Getting the boil to go inside the crawfish and the juices there inside the crawfish to get outside, outside the shells, if that makes any sense. I'm probably not the one to be trying to explain something like that to anybody. But it makes sense in my head, goddammit. Okay, got a pretty good mix for water temperature. It's almost there. I'm gonna drop a little bit more ice in there. And then we'll catch up in about 20 minutes and see how they taste. All right, it's been 20 minutes. I'm gonna go over here and attempt to hold the camera by myself and taste one of these crawfish and get it documented for y'all. I don't know why that's such a big deal, but it seems as though in every crawfish cooking video or how-to cook video I see, uh, they always got to taste it and they got to kind of put on a show for everybody back at home. Oh man, this is good. Uh, I'm going to give a shot at it. I'm not going to probably be able to accomplish this for y'all, but I'm going to let y'all know at least my thoughts on how the crawfish taste after a 20 minute soak. All right, I'm going to give them a little stir up one more time. Twenty minutes time, my water temperature has dropped another ten to fifteen degrees. Not that that means a whole hill of beans. But just kind of an observation. See, this little dude's gonna be hot, hot, hot. Yeah, he is. He's hot. Let me see if I can do this here. Huh. Looks okay so far. The old taste test. So far, it's hit two of the three critical criteria for making crawfish, in my opinion. I'm going to hand the phone off to my beautiful wife over here so she can continue to record. So, as talked about, looking for three things. Is it juicy? Is the flavor good? Does it peel right? So, it is juicy, i tell you that much. Uh, flavored. I'm a little biased, but it is dynamite. <clears throat> yeah. I like taking a shot of crawfish bull. Now for the next one. 
first two reins came off fairly easy. Pinched that tail, pulled the meat out all at once, came right out, separated nicely. Now, downside to not being able to get my hands on some purge crawfish. That little guy. Look at look at the meat. See how it's yellow? All the way down the tip of the tail. I'm not sure if my camera can pick that up or not. I've got the juices running down my finger. That's a juicy crawfish. And to me, it looks like the meat meat's uh, been penetrated with the crawfish boil from top to bottom. Let's give her a little shot. Mm. Yeah, that's how you're getting. Right. Them crawfish are done. That's after 20 minutes. Uh, but I'm gonna give them another additional five minutes or so to soak. But that flavor is on point. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, about another five minutes. Again, simple recipe. Just make it your own. Try to follow loosely, I would suggest, with my cooking method and what I, the things I'm looking for with my crawfish. The time, the separation between the, the ring and the, the main body, if it's later in the season, if it's earlier in the season, shells are soft, no, no worries. Uh, get your water temperature down around 150, 160 degrees with some ice over season to compensate for that water dilution you're going to have when the ice melts soak them soak them soak them probably add some more video to this but for now that's going to be it all right we opted on giving these crawfish an additional 10 minutes soak time for a total of 30 minutes that works out good for the wife. She doesn't suck the heads. Uh, I do, but I'm a big boy. I got cold beer. I can handle the heat from the additional transfusion of deliciousness that's been put into those crawfish heads. So now it's time to dump them. I said earlier, man, we might add some more video of this one. We got to, because this is the second to final step. The final step is to eat those sons of guns. Open up Old Faithful here. Under there. Crystal, my love, I'm going to get you to open the cooler up and hold it for me. Throw this monitor. One more drink here, folks. One more drink. Y'all can't get those in y'all's home state. I'm sorry for you. That's mighty fine stuff. Mix up and we drain them. Dump them. Into That's crawfish dinner bell right there. Finish and touch. See if I can get this son of a gun open. <laughs> of course you would. My lemon pepper and the parquet butter. I left this parquet out so it gets good and warm, easy to put on. Now y'all do me a favor. Don't go look in your iPhone and Samsung screens or your computer screens while you're watching this on YouTube. I know it looks good, but you're not going to get the flavor. I promise. So we'll just squirt that butter down there on top of them bugs. Oh, yeah. I'll take Cajun lemon pepper, or Cajun injector lemon pepper. I'll give them a good sprinkle.
lot of folks at this point will add additional crawfish seasoning to their crawfish. You don't need it if you give it the good soak time. You don't need it. The flavor's there already. The flavor's inside the shell. We don't need to compensate. You know, mix up. Those crawfish are ready to eat. Golly, they are ready to eat. I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Maybe y'all know the answer to this or not. But the, over the past couple years, I have noticed, not at my bull so much, it's the first sack of crawfish I bought where I've seen this. Take a look at this crawfish right here. Come a little closer, baby. Look at them pinchers. See how light colored they are? See all them legs, how white they are? Now it's definitely crawfish, but it ain't your atypical crawfish we get. Now somebody said something about that might be a tombstone crawfish or something, invasive species, I don't know. It sure is different. I don't remember if it tastes any different than regular crawfish. I would just Trying to get a little feedback, see if anybody had any information on those. Or knew what was up with that. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Help me out. Help me understand. Alright, so we're going to end this uh, section of the video. And we'll finish it off with a big old yummy flat crawfish laying there steaming while me and Crystal start to tear into them. See y'all in a minute. All right, here's the finished product. Uh, juicy, easy to peel, flavorful crawfish. Corn, potatoes, a little onion. Uh, again, man, you can throw anything you want in the bowl. Everybody knows that. But uh, you'll get the opportunity. Try a little tortellini in your next bowl. Crystal loves it. I love it. It's always been a big hit at all our bowls. It's something different. Really soaks up the flavor. It's good to go. Uh, not going to try to keep this video any longer. I'm going to eat some crawfish now. So is the wife. I know she's getting pissed at me because she's got to hold the phone. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.